Okay, good evening. I'd like to call to order this regular March 5th, 2024 council meeting. Please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the pledge of Let's pray. Uh, I just want to just come here right now and just, uh, first of all, just take a deep breath and just to invite you to be part of this meeting, Father. I also just want to ask us and say thank you for who you are. I want to say thank you for your grace, your compassion, your love. As well, your forgiveness that you offer to each and every one of us, and so choose to accept. And I just come to you now, Father, and asking that we will have the same heart set and mindset as you, that mindset, heart set of compassion, love, and forgiveness, and understanding, as we move on from this point within this meeting. Again, Father, we love you and we thank you in all things. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good evening. The verbal roll call. Council members present for the record. Council member back. Present. Council member Joy. Present. Council Member Locke? Present. Council Member Perkins? Present. Council Member Sexton? Present. Vice Mayor Atkins? Present. Mayor Nickerson? Present. Minutes from February 20th meeting are still being prepared. We will have prepared uh, for approval at our next meeting on March the 19th. Next on the agenda is old business. Anyone on council have old business? Excuse me. We talked about this as a story in the last minutes. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 My old business has to do with the resolutions from the February 20th uh, council meeting, uh, specifically 2024-04, and 2024-06. I, I wanted to I wanted to ask. When was the Attorney General contacted? Okay, I'll tell you that because of the ongoing investigation, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. You can't tell me when he was contacted? I do not. Not at this time. I've been advised not to discuss anything pertaining to this investigation. How about the state auditor? When was he contacted? Same, same question. When, when was the special Council law firm contacted. Same thing. It's all part of the investigation. I'm not literally to discuss it. So you're not going to tell us how you came to the conclusions of what, what was in these resolutions that the investigation is ongoing, Mr. Jordan, and it will come out soon. But for right now, I'm unable to discuss anything with regard to the investigation. Anything. So I'm I'm going to submit these questions. Uh, and, I, and I want them added in the minutes because I want answers to them. Okay. Um, and, and I'm just going to read through them because I think that it's very important that everyone knows uh, what I'm actually asking. And I, I want to know when the Attorney General was contacted, uh, the date and time. I want to know when the State Auditor was contacted, date and time. I want to know when the Special Counsel Law Firm uh, was contacted, date and time. I want I want to know when the interim manager was contacted, date and time. I want to know who initiated a communication with the law firm. I want to know who communi communicated with the interim manager. 
I want um, I want to know what the relationship is between the mayor, council members, and the law firm. I want to know if uh, I want to know what the relationship is between the law firm and the interim manager. I I, um, I want to know. Um, I want to know when the interim manager was appointed. Uh, I think I can ask that, and that should be uh, not part of any of this, correct? I'm going to wait until we find out from our legal department as to the pending of the investigation. I wouldn't talk about anything. You can't get to any of this. You can't tell me when the interim manager was appointed? No, sir, I'm not. Yet the city manager can can identify that if he wishes, but I've been told not to discuss anything that pertains to this investigation. Anything. Okay. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. Interim manager, can you tell me when you was appointed? February 21st. Okay. Uh, what time? 9 a.m. Okay. Uh, when was your contract signed? That's dated February 21st. Okay. When when was the law firm contract signed? Do we know that? I don't know that. Um, what what account are we using to pay the law firm and the manager? I'll have to let you know. I, I don't know if Tom yet. I mean, it was approved, so and it was signed, so there has to be an account that's associated with this. Is there not, Mr. Mayor? It should be yes. We'll have to get back to you. I don't know for sure on that. So a contract was approved. Was was there was the budget approved for this? Let me explain to you something, Mr. Joy. Everything that you're talking about is referencing the investigation. No, it was, this is it, referencing it is, old business. No, it, it's we, we passed these. We passed so these. Out of order. No, I'm not out of order. You are out of order. Okay. Everything that you're talking about pertains to the investigation. All right. I am not at liberty, and neither is anybody else, at liberty to discuss anything with, with regard to the investigation. Okay. I'm sorry, that's just that's how it's going to be. This is not part of the investigation. It is part of it. No, it isn't okay. because because you entered. Sir, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to argue with you again about it. I'm, I'm not. You entered okay. into this this agreement here as part of the investigation, as part of the investigation, and I am not going to discuss it any further. I am not. I apologize. It's not going to happen. You're 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 digging. You keep digging this hole. <laughs> Have orders, please. If you do not maintain order, you will be escorted out of the room. Okay, no talking in the back. If you signed on the list, you can approach the podium. You'll have three minutes to discuss your vote. Okay, we will not have any outbursts in here tonight. You will be escorted out of this building. So, I'm, I'm going to continue with my questions because I, I want these answered. I think the the public need uh, these answers. I'll tell, you, I'll, give you, I'll tell you what you do. You give me a list of your questions. No, no, I, these, need need to be, these need to be read because the people here have come here to listen. Right. And I am telling you and the crowd and, and the citizens of this community that we are not at liberty to discuss it right now. No, well, I'm going to read, read my questions then. Because you can read, go on with your questions. Yes, please. Um, I, I want to see... Uh, any correspondence between the mayor, council, and a law firm, whether that be telephone, text, email, or hot copy. Uh, I want to see correspondence between the law firms and the interim manager. I, I am curious as to how a contract with the interim manager was uh, negotiated and signed between 8 p.m on February 20th uh, when the when the resolution was passed and uh, now we know 9 9 a.m I put 10 a.m but 
uh, on the 21st when he arrived at the office. I want to know uh, how that how that negotiation was transpired overnight. I want to know who wrote the resolutions. I want to know when the resolutions were written. Um, I want to know how the law firm, uh, uh, in this case, uh, Mr. Uh, McNamee, was able to conduct official business at the council meeting before he was actually appointed. <laughs> I want to know how the law firm was able to direct the mayor at the council meeting. I want to know if any other member of council employees or the community knew about the agreements. I want to know whether any of the other members of council, the employees or the community knew about the resolutions. Um, And I can I can wait on the rest. Oh, one other question. Um, I'm I'm wondering whether or not anybody on the council actually read the engagement letter with the law firm specifically. whether or not they realize that the rates are subject to change at the MLG's discretion. Um, and whether or not they realize that they may obtain the assistance of other attorneys or paralegals in the firm and when professional judgment indicates that it's necessary to do so. There's, there's a lot of impropriety that I've seen, some, a lot of questionable actions here, and um, we, we need answers. Can I have a copy of those questions? Yes. Okay, if I can get a copy of those, I'll make sure that they get it for and we'll get answers for it. Fair enough? Fair enough. I don't know. Just doing the whole business. Go ahead. Go ahead. As mayor, you're the one, are you the one to contact the State Department of Ohio Auditor or State Special Investigation Unit? I know you ain't gonna ask because I had that yes or no. In the village budget, improper use of funds, two hundred thousand dollars in the red this year. It's only been like a month and a half. No money, no more money in our budget. Can I ask the, the village manager if anything from them? I would tell you that we are limited and we are not going to talk about this investigation. If it's part of the investigation, Mr. Perkins, we are not going to talk about it. I just want to know if we got any money to, to run the run the village on. Am I, am I, can I ask that question? Yes or no? Yes. Quite a bit. I mean, there's a budget has been approved. Yeah, there's money in the accounts. Thank you. Because we'll go to we'll make some comment here. You and your office staff have approved falsification records that the police cruiser had been purchased without approval. Did you ask these for these records or did the staff just give them to you? Ask, well, can't ask the staff. Okay. I know. I know. What is the what is what is the just cause? I have no idea. How much is the tax, really taxpayers paying for the acting manager per day, and the village taxpayers paying him if he does more a week for the village for the eleven? Act act of the manager. Act, the acting manager should put on paper how much the group is being paid per day, work week, month, on a 
the expertise that we've ever report is what fund it is coming out of, what, what reported fund is going to come out of for transparency. That they have been paid, group to pay for the paperwork. Okay. Did the village lawyer see that this paper on this ordinance of Bill 33, this will income tax provision? Yes or no? We're going to talk about that here in a minute. <clears throat> okay, check that idea. Okay. Comments. How, how are these 16 and 18 year olds going to be told that they're going to have to pay taxes? We discussed it in, the, in this resolution. You should have gotten there, but you got a packet that explains how this tax system came about in right. July of 2023 through the state. Oh, it, 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 it explains it. The, the kids are going to be told how they got to pay it? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't well, know that's what I asked. Told. What, how, is, how are the kids going to know that they got to pay taxes now? Who's going to tell them? Okay, I get why that's, that's, that's uh, because you can't. Uh, about the proof of record because of the cruisers purchase without approval who the staff person was. Okay, good. I know the gentleman next to me, uh, Mike, is the acting manager. And look, the way I understand, I read that paper, would you want to hire an attorney on that? A group and also somebody to uh, do the paperwork for the financing part, correct? Yes, those are two resolutions on the agenda. Yes, you got any idea of how much money they're going to cost? Um, I do for the law director, don't for the uh, for the finance. I'll see can you find about finance as soon as you if you authorize me to go forward, I will present that to you because I know these people out here will get it all taxpayers, so it's going to cost them a lot of money. I, was, I can't answer that question either because of what I was going to ask you, but uh, if um, Mr. Back or Mr. Sexton or Mr. Mrs. Atkins knew that this was going to happen before it happened. I will answer that. No, I did not. Thank you. I'll answer that as well. No, I did not. No. Yeah. No. Thank you. So, so was one person. For the village manager, the first act he did was bring the paper coming over to uh, about the tax. Okay, couldn't there be something else besides looking to help the village or get to run? You know, that's 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 a good that's a good thing to bring up. But you know, how's how's the how's the how's the village running? I'm not sure I understand your question. What would you? He bought that book about the tax, okay? And that's all I see. There's nothing about it, but you know, the street's going to be repaired, somebody doing this, somebody doing that. Yeah, so the reason I brought that for you is it has to be approved soon. Um, it's something that came out with the budget bill last year and needs to be approved quickly. Um, I can certainly give you an update at a future meeting of what projects will take place, etc. No problem. What happens if that doesn't, it doesn't get approved? Uh, then I guess we'll, we'll be in non-compliance with the state law. Okay. And there we are. Okay, this is another one for you. I would like to take a tour of the courthouse, the fire department, grounds department, and the waste department. And as soon as you could not make arrangements, because I believe you've got to be the one to uh, show me and anybody else that hasn't been there, we're going to take and make arrangements too. Absolutely. And Mr. Parkins. I got one more. 
who requested all, who requested all the police at that last meeting and who paid for it? I don't know the answer to that question. Because of the investigation, the, the, it's, it was requested, and that's as far as I'm going to talk about it. Okay. But I said, maybe who requested? That's part, that's part of the ongoing investigation. I'm going to talk about that. Hi. Okay. Comment on something, on Mr. Hawkins. Did you, uh, when we toured the um, courthouse, did you actually get the email or the notification when we was doing that? I don't do email. What about the notification? Because we was we did it with Glenna. Huh? We toured the courthouse with Glenna. What? I wasn't. I wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> Perkins, anything else? Yeah, so, yeah. Do you have some? Yeah, a few things. Um, can we get a copy of the interim manager's position uh, contract? Yeah. Um, I know asked, I understand the ongoing investigation, so you're not going to answer a lot, but he did ask what we paid for it. Certainly, we can answer that question. Is the village paying for that? Or did somebody individually pay for it? We're going to hold off on discussing anything that pertains with this. We're going to hold off, okay? Um, so the resolutions had on their point and it went on the paperwork prior to us even getting the agendas. So the goal. You are aware that those were pre-printed on those papers with your name? No, I was actually out of town. I just got back late Monday night, so I had no clue what was going on. Okay. I had a couple of people reach out and I get that you're going to consider this whole business as well, um, asking for public records <laughs> and are not getting their requests filled. Is there a reason why? So as you can imagine, we're being inundated with public records requests. So we are to take them and they were submitted. Okay. Some of them are asking for quite a bit of records. Some of which need to be redacted because it's right. personal information. So it's just taking a long time to wait through that information. So we're trying our best we can to get to them. But all that is taking longer than we expect. But we're doing the best we can. May I say something there? Are you building? Um, oh, I'm sorry. You, you can go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I think that's it because I think anything I ask at this point, you're going to not discuss it. Mr. Yes, I may. The public record request. Um, I requested a public record uh, back in January, and I still don't have it. So um, going on uh, week uh, three, I think maybe we should give him some grace time because of the amount that he said was coming in. Um, and as I know from the past, it takes longer than three weeks to get a public record request. Mm -hmm. Just saying. A few more things. Um, can we get a copy and itemized charges so far for this special council mm -hmm. that was voted in? I think the taxpayers need to see how much with no prepare, preparation prior to this was um, quickly voted on, and they need to know what, how much this is costing the village. Can we get that? Excuse me. Thank you. Sorry. Did you hear that? No, there was. I did hear you. Yes. you did. Yep. Can you get that for me? Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Beck, what do you Go ahead. Is this a nice investigation to start for this year, this year, not last year? It's an, it's an investigation. Okay. okay. At the last meeting, uh, I know you because I've sat here and I, I listened to you. Nicole is a council lady, okay? You made her uh, a clerk to take names. And she took the names as a clerk. And after that, she turned around and voted. If she was a clerk, she could she should not have been allowed to vote as a council lady because she, you made her a clerk, correct? We, we needed somebody, right? But, but is, is that legal? I'm asking him, is that legal or, or not? I don't have an answer for him. I don't know either. I don't think I don't it's legal. I think it's illegal. You can't make somebody a clerk and a zombie. Well, I don't know either. Okay. You can't make somebody a, a clerk and a zombie paper that was her name or that she was a clerk and then turn around and she was able to vote as a council member. And if she wasn't able to vote, which I say she shouldn't have been, it should have been three to three. Thank you. I'm done. Um, I just wanted to go back to what he was asking about the um, the tour. Did you not get notified of the tour um, when we, I, I believe it was me, Melissa, and Nicole that going to take? Did you not get a notification I, of that? I don't do computers. I don't do medicine. And I do not text for text. If I don't get a phone call, or it was nice of him because just yesterday, I think, uh, was it? I got a piece of paper in an envelope from her. Yeah. So you don't so, receive any. But I ain't, got a, I ain't so, got no problem with that. So you don't receive any of the emails or anything like that to get sent out to us? Well, I was hurting because they could take a computer and filter that with it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. If you, want, if you want for something for sure, my great granddaughter. Is in uh, Miami of Pontrell, Ohio, GPA 3.75. She's trying to set it up for me. I got 77, I guess, emails or something on there. It's sitting there. I don't know what no, that that's the that's I was just, I just didn't know if you, if you had been I'm, made aware of it. Uh, I figured that at the time, maybe the, I'm not, the, the manager reached out to everybody to see if anybody. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. If you do, that's, I feel sorry for you. But you can take the computer and emails and uh, keep them. That's why I like everything on paper. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I can't answer who their accounts are, but who is signing and paying bills for the village? During this, he's authorized and how that comes out. So, uh, Beth Bigner and I are signers on the accounts now for the village. Okay. So, those are being paid and checks and everything. So, she was appointed? She was. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Is that it for the business? Okay. Your business. Ordinance 2024 01, first reading. In ordinance amending portions of Chapter 36 of the Village of New Lebanon, codified ordinances titled Income Tax to comply with the changes enumerated in Ohio House Bill 33. By charter, this ordinance must be read on three different days. We will set the second reading of this ordinance for March 19, 2024. Is there any questions about that? You gonna do three readings? Where? Yes. We're try and pass it as one. No, we're going to do three weeks. This is, this is um, from that um, house bill. So this is actually everybody's voting on it and it's on different city councils. Correct. Thank you. Um, can we get new resolutions that are
This doesn't have a back of my shirt like that. I got one. Mine's on the back. Oh, yeah. Resolution 2024 07. A resolution authorizing the acting building manager to enter into a contract for EMS billing. Comments or questions addressing this resolution? Anybody have anything? I, I do. Um, are we? Um, I, I know that I know that Chief Kaiser um, went through this. Are we accepting his recommendation um, on the? Uh, On under it, or what, what he believes is the best one to get. That's what I'm recommending to you. Yes, I believe it is the least expensive option that charges the least amount of percentage. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Chief? So this is not unique to New Lebanon. Uh, Jane Chuck here made the decision to cut several of their departments loose. Um, I have met with other fire chiefs, some of the companies. I have talked to some of the companies via email, via phone. Um, I can tell you the one thing I like about ABN besides the 5% is they, um, the one building company that was at 5.75 wanted us to find our own collection agency um, to use. Um, ABN uses someone, um, I believe they're out of Columbus to do so. Um, the one who charged us 6%, we actually, or one to charge us 6%, we actually didn't even get their contract back yesterday. I asked for that contract last Monday. Um, ABN is local, they're out on the rain. Um, and they are a, they're a small family owned billing company. Um, and they told us they have no problem taking on the additional. They actually gave us 5%. I know that's who Farmersville Fire signed with as well. Um, so after talking to several, and then um, they waived all the fees, or the fees that they have were built in. To the five percent. Some of the other companies may have waived their initial setup fees, but a lot of them carry extra fees on top of the percentage that they charge as well. Um, so I'll stick with the recommendation that it's ABN. Um, and that is the, the company you're going to engage. If you approve tonight, that is a company that is. Is uh maybe Emma or it is because they try to set up cost cost? I'll defer to Chief Cassidy. 
everything that I was told was in that 5%. So they're actually at like 4.79 and then their additional fees bring it to the 5%. Because I know the, the other one didn't, didn't have a set of cost. That's why I'm asking. And this, this year, we're going to get a little good. Is that going to be the problem right here? You know? Is that the format you mean? Is that yeah. The, yeah, that'll be the problem. Because there's a couple. It should be village acting manager, not village manager. <laughs> is this going to be within the, the budget for 2024? Yes, money wise. Yeah. Okay. And they, just, they take it out of the buildings that they charge for MSOs. Anyway. The way it works is they, they you have to reconcile what we collect on a monthly basis. And then we pay them 5% of what we, what we reconcile on a monthly basis. So the money comes to us. Um, that's the way Change Healthcare was set up. They would send us basically an invoice saying, we owe you owe us this much based on what they collected. Um, so it's kind of, we get paid, then they get paid. And then the last paragraph where it says, village manager, to the acting manager. And, uh, Somebody from the legal council who just yes. What was it? So I engaged Mr. Uh, McNeil Law Group did the legislation for this evening. You got a, a group, a lawyer, Brenda's? Yes. Okay. So I was in a budget, but then uh, because it mess up the budget, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Motion to adopt resolution 2024-07. So moved. Second. Vice Mayor Atkins? Yes. Councilmember Beck? Yes. Councilmember Joy? Yes. Councilmember Locke? Yes. Councilmember Perkins? Yes. Councilmember Sexton? Yes. Mayor Nickerson? Yes. Seven to zero. Resolution 2024-01 resolution authorizing the acting building man acting village man manager to enter into a contract for temporary financial services. Council comments, questions addressing this resolution. Is, has the <clears throat> investigation for the uh, been finished yet? Is on hold. Um, What, what service are you looking to engage? So we have an employee, Beth McNally, has done a really good job of filling in where she can, but she's not familiar with all of the systems in terms of the SSI system, the computer program. She's done a great job so far, but uh, we need a financial person that can come in and balance the books, uh, make sure that we um, draw some the funds, that type of thing. We need somebody that can do that for us. And, and uh, this this is authorizing you to enter into a contract that we don't even know who you're actually going looking at uh, um, entering it into a contract with. So I didn't bring a contract to you because I didn't start looking for anyone. I wanted to make sure you guys were on board with that. I can bring the contract back to you uh, once we find someone to do that work. I mean, I, I would like to see who you're um, actually looking to enter into an agreement with before I'm willing to uh, move forward with with a contract, well, authorizing you to negotiate a contract. Last question. Sure. Priorly, um, haven't in the past, haven't we normally just authorized the Village manager to negotiate the contract and look before. He's not our village manager, but he's he's sitting in the place for ours until he's then. A, he's an he's an interim manager. I understand that. 
until an investigation is finished. So he's filling in for the for the spot that does the day to day basis of a village manager, correct? Correct. So then, if you're, I'm fine with you having an issue. I'm just wondering why it's never been an issue before. You because know I mean? it's always been someone that has a had a contract with us. I I understand that, but it was never an issue before with that. Now this person is. He's not our manager. He's an interim manager. I understand that, <laughs> but he's taking care of the day to day basis of these things. Yeah. And it was, I'm just I'm just asking why it was never brought up before. His question if it's generally the same guidelines. It's not the same guidelines because he is an acting interim manager. During for for the break of a while, ours is out. Correct. Correct. So I'm just I want to know who he's actually entering into a, an agreement with. And I understand that, but have you ever asked that from our prior manager? I would have I would have called her out. I don't I remember mm -hmm. that, but anyways. I'm, I'm done. So, so you, I'm not, you're fine. I just want to, and that's all I wanted. I just wanted to know if you'd ever prior before had questioned that thing. I Questions. I, I have. And, and, and whenever I had a question, I always called the, the municipal manager or the department head that, that actually um, was putting something forward. Um, if we don't authorize this, this will put the village at risk. I also would like to think that I think you might like see a contract with you and be with how much it's going to cost versus what we had and so forth before I would go on the resolution. So do we want to table this resolution for right now? Then? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Who's paying for this person? The village of people or what's the your group? The village you pay for. That's what I was thought. And it's done that way for separation purposes. You wouldn't want me to pay for a finance person. I mean, the group is getting an X amount of money we're going to pay. And they're going what? 50, 100,000 dollars or more? You know, all get how long you take to do an investigation, you look at in a, say a month and a half, where the somebody's got proof of that they you know agree to be able to see it. And look, you have no idea, maybe you've seen it. I don't know. But look, it doesn't look good for me to look at not seeing something on paper. I understand that. I know. You know that, that group out there, the village you know, and I'm part of the village. I got paid for another person when this should have never happened. Because to me, we're going to seem like somebody will went to the, the, the regular manager and the, the clerk and say, hey, I got this problem. I want to see. Can you explain this to me? And if, it, if your expect, explanation is not good, then you go further. But this is a good, uh, this is totally this really part. I mean, we're going to, I was going to bring my wife up there, but she was scared to just come up here. Mm -hmm. I'm done. We know. We know. Do we want to table it? Please come up with <coughs> Yeah, that's what I wish. Okay. Let me go to ask for a motion to table this uh, resolution 2024 dash Move. Motion to motion. I'll second. When are you going to have an agreement for us? I'll hook that at the next meeting. So, are we tabling this for two meetings so that we have a chance to evaluate? I guess that's on the table. It's you want to do that? Yeah, I, I, want, okay. I want time to evaluate. Good enough. Do you have to do that? Yes. Okay, that's what we'll do. So we'll do the April meeting. It'll be the April meeting. Fair enough? Yes, sir. This one, April meeting, fair enough? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mr. Perkins? Councilmember Perkins? Yes. Take on this, sir. Councilmember Back? Yes. Councilmember Locke? Yes. Councilmember Sexton? Yes. Vice Mayor Atkins? Yes. Member Joy? Yes. Mayor Nickerson? Yes. Seven yeses, you're right. Two. 
Resolution 2024-09, a resolution authorizing the village of New Lebanon Council to appoint Michael P. McNamee of McNamee Law Group as interim law director and to approve the legal services agreement. Council comments or questions addressing this resolution? Councilor Lewis. Is there any other law firms that we could we are, could look into? My concern is this gentleman was part of the interim special counsel investigating, and then you're wanting to bring him as a law director. I'm concerned with conflict there. So I understand your question, but I don't know if there's a conflict because in both cases, he's acting on behalf of the village. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wouldn't necessarily be at odds with those two things. Um, yeah, certainly that's familiarity with the village. He's written some legislation for us already. Um, and I think it's, and really there aren't many law firms out there that take on municipal clients like this, especially for the cost that we are uh, that he is seeking to get. We are still paying him on um, ongoing correctly in this special investigation at that rate that's in that paperwork, correct? That's correct. And then we're going to pay him pay that. Correct. And these taxpayers uh, pay for that. Well, we need a law director regardless. Whether it's him or anyone else, we'd still pay, pay both of those fees. <laughs> I, I have a question. Hold on a second. Is the law director with your group? No, he is not. I do not have a group. I'm on my own. He's not with my group. Huh? He's not with my group, though. No. He's separate and apart from me. So, how much is he going to be paid an hour? As a law director, he will make the same amount as the current, as the former law director. Or the law director that's on me. How much is that? It, about $2,000 a month. So is the village pays for that, or was it the village pays for that? Yes, yeah. Jesus Christ. So I I also have uh, issues with conflict here. Um, if the if the current investigation isn't complete, um, I I'm I'm curious as to how he's going to be able to separate defending. Uh, the, the community or defending the, the municipality as well as uh, investigating um, alleged improprieties. Um, but my my main concern is the fact that you say that it's going to be two thousand dollars a month, and that's not what this agreement says. The, the agreement says that it's going to be um, for Michael McNamee and Deep Rose at two hundred dollars an hour. Uh, plus a paralegal rate of eighty dollars an hour, um, and it also comes down to uh, where he says that it is subject to change at their discretion, and and that's just not proper. Um, but why would we do that? So I think, let me answer your conflict question first. I don't know, in my mind, again, I'm not an attorney, so take this for what it's worth. I don't know that there's a conflict because in both cases, the village is his client. Um, he works at the, at the, for the betterment of the village in both cases, right? The investigation is on behalf of the village. As a law director, he'd work on behalf of the village. Um, I don't see a conflict of interest there. But again, I'm not a legal scholar, but in my non-legal opinion, that's not a conflict. I also had a conversation with him after he received this legislation. Uh, we can modify the agreement to say that he will cap his hourly years monthly fees of what we are currently paying. Um, so one of the things that you said uh, when that Mr. Perkins asked was, um, who who gave you legal advice on the on the on the resolution, and you said that it was that it was. Uh, Mr. McNamee, and in in his scope of re representation, it states that the only thing that he will be he will be doing is handling legal consultation needs with respect to the investigation. So I'm I'm curious as to how he was able to 
give you legal advice uh, without uh, that being uh, part of his agreement. So part of my purview as the interim acting village manager, whatever you want to call it, is to uh, work with legal people to get legal opinions and get legal work done on behalf of the village. I use that discretion to have him do that work in the interim, knowing that we would bring this resolution before you to have him be our acting law director. So you, you had already entered into negotiations with him to do this? I wouldn't say any negotiations. We had a conversation about it. He prepared this language, and that's all. That's as far as it went. Well, that sounds like you already entered into a negotiation. Ultimately, the decision is yours. So no matter what I talk about, if you don't approve it, it doesn't happen. Um, you, have you had other dealings with him prior to coming to this village? So in my previous placement, he was the law director in our previous place. So I know the quality of his work. Uh, how many other um, villages does he or cities that he does law directing at? I'm only familiar with two. Okay. Uh, I believe he does Inglewood and Fairland. Okay. Did you have you asked anyone else? I, I see. Uh, time is of the essence. So yeah, uh, realizing that his work is quality and I have a good relationship with him mm -hmm. and he's already engaged with the village, it makes sense. Right. Are you aware? I'm not aware. So in other words, we're you can't handle those other other duties. Until you find somebody else to do it, to pay up, correct? What duties are the law duties? Yeah, I can't handle the law duties for the village. What about what, uh, the financial part? So you, it it's, would be improper for me to do the finances and also the administration. That's not that's not proper. You need a separation between the person that's doing the accounting, the person that's running the organization. Just answer my question a little bit way back about separations. Is there any reason why I'm not going to ask you a question? Uh, feel free. I have nothing to hide. Why do you leave airport? Uh, airport. You know, I've run. I've been there for seven years. I had run my time there. I felt like it was time for change. And you, you hooked up with your uh, the group? I did not. I so I was taking a break, uh, doing some consulting work, and Mike asked me if I would be willing to do this, and I said sure. Okay, my question. question. You were saying that, Mr. Joy, that you believe that would be ethics, and I believe Ms. Locke said it would be ethics. I don't think, and my question, I, I said it would be conflict. Conflict. I I just, so, wouldn't that put him, if it was a conflict, couldn't that put him in a position to possibly lose his license if it was, if it was a conflict, something that he could lose his license for it. And I mean, if he was willing to write up, not not saying that it's like a done deal, like it was said, we vote on it, but I don't think any law firm would go into something knowing that if they did it, it would be a possibility of him, him losing law licenses over that. I, I, I can't see that. It's just my opinion on that. If my understanding is correct, I'm not a lawyer either, but I imagine that there was wrongdoing that it could put him in a position to lose that. And I don't think any attorney anywhere would ever do that. Wrongdoing, um, wrongdoing in, in the conflict of interest. Conflict, different things. conflict of interest, wrongdoing, whatever you want to put a name on. They're two different things. Anything that would cause him to lose his license purposefully, I can't see anybody doing that purposefully. I suggest look at uh, call your attorney and, and ask him about that. And that, that'll set your set your uh, answer question. Asking my attorney what? If you're concerned about what the, the conflict that you talked about. I don't need to talk to my attorney. I would think that any attorney that would be going into making an agreement wouldn't go into an agreement knowing the laws 
and be willing to possibly lose his license over that situation. That's that's what I said. That's where I'm at. I, I don't know what else to say. That's where, where I'm at. I can't see anybody wanting to lose their license and going into a possible agreement that could cost them their career. Right. I don't spell out any clear. I do not know. Yeah, I think looking at this someone else, I mean, people have been coming here asking for transparency, and that's what this council said they wanted to do. You have somebody that's doing an investigation, and now you're turning on and asking them to do that. I think we have to this community to give that transparency, don't you? With them doing investigating and then just sitting up here and on um, there's two different things. I'm sorry, I can hear. Okay. <laughs> well, again, I think that, that in my mind there's no conflict because in both cases the village is his client. So as long as he's working on behalf of the village, there aren't even cross purposes there. It's, it's the same purpose, just doing two different types of things. An investigation and then this is a separate. We're paying him for two positions for this village. Correct. Two different agreements. Yes. Right. Okay. One more. Who's doing the investigation? You or was uh, I am not a part of the investigation, or I'm not not doing any part of this. Okay. Mike, Mike, Mike's group is doing the investigation, correct? Mm -hmm. So I know who's doing the investigation. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. With motion to adopt resolution 2024 dash Second. Second. Councilmember Sexton. Yes. Councilmember Back. Yes. Councilmember Perkins? No. Councilmember Joy? No. Councilmember Locke? No. Vice Mayor Atkins? Yes. Mayor Nickerson? Yes. There are four yes votes and three no votes. Motion passes. Next is public comments or questions. We'll call your name and address, uh, and address for the record. We'll have three minutes. Three minutes to speak and be heard. Once your time is up, you'll be thanked. No additional time will be given, and no donation of time by others to others will be allowed. Carla Heads, 670 Homeway Drive. Thanks. It pertains to that. Go ahead. Is there a reason why we changed it from 10 to back to 3? Because of ongoing what's going on. You want to short for a short room. For a while. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's thank you. Go ahead, Mr. I'm sorry. I need to start with heads. 670 home drive. Um, I had plenty that I wanted to say, but of course the time has been short, and I've also heard many, many times that because of the investigation, most of my questions would not be answered. I do want to say um I read the Daily Daily News article and attorney McNamee stated that ongoing operations are not within the scope of his responsibilities. His responsibilities are solely within the investigation. So, Mr. McNamee, what changed your mind? Remember, your job is solely within the investigation, and now you have chosen to be an interim law director. You are most certainly now, I know, being paid for both roles by us as taxpayers. To me, this is unethical and a way to pad your pockets. Mr. McNamee, also stated that our council is ensuring that our residents are protected. I'm here to tell you that the only ones that's protecting us is Mr. Joy, Ms. Locke, and Mr. Perkins. The rest of you are in it for yourself, and that is obvious. So, what I would suggest to you, and this is only a suggestion, for the next meetings, you might want to get some more chairs so that the rest of these people can sit comfortably because I believe Ms. Venus always encourages people to come and get involved. And now we are involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
43 pages over. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Ms. Exton, Ms. Matthews, Ms. Anderson, Ms. Beck. Thank you. I just want to say that. It is interesting that we are now worried about taxes and we are now worried about where things are going to get paid from. We never have in the past. We bought police cars, we built the salt barge, and I think it's being used for salt, but now we're worried about $2,000 a month. Doesn't make sense. It's interesting how things are now concerned about getting a request, when many of us have requested things in the past, and it has been years since we've gotten them. It's interesting how things are not interested in the cost of things. Y'all, you spend money like it's going out of style. I applaud our new intern manager for trying to get us back. Yes, you have to have the accounting and manager separate. That's by common sense. And it is also common sense that someone can't just go in and do that job as an accounting person. That poor person that's doing that job right now, I feel for them. They're trying to do their best. And instead of applauding that, you all have made it impossible for them to even sleep. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. Mary George, 35, Coleman Boy. Thank you. I am Amy Joy and I do live at 35 Home Report. On January 2nd of 2024, Mr. Nickerson, Mr. Back, and Ms. Sexton swore an oath to uphold the charter and the ordinances of the municipality of New York, as well as uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. On the very first meeting, the new council members, Mr. Nickerson, Mr. Back, Ms. Sexton, as well as Ms. Atkins, all denied Ms. McMahon's request to be on board. Ms. McMahon is a former council member and a long-standing community leader and organizer of many community events. She is fully uh, qualified to be on the board. On February 6th of 2024, Mr. Nickerson appointed the same person to three boards without asking any questions or reviewing any qualifications and completely disregarded the other applicants. Then on February 2nd, completely dis disregarding the request of the long-standing um, members of the community, Mr. Doug Thompson and Brittany Howell. On February 20th, ma'am, how do you say the name? Mm -hmm. Enemy, uh, took over our municipal council meeting, directing Mr. Nickerson and reading the resolution. Mr. Nickerson also informed everyone they were not allowed to speak or ask questions unless called upon, but wouldn't even look at anyone so they could speak. Shannon Bean was asked questions of Mr. Joy and Ms. Locke, and they weren't able to answer her. They had to sit there with their mouth closed. The new mayor and new members of council, as well as Ms. Atkins, immediately took the opportunity to potentially bankrupt the Lebanon. In addition, they have damaged the reputation of the municipal manager, Glenn Madden, legal counsel, Mr. Ronald Keener, the chief of police, Mr. Curtis Hensley, financial officer, Mr. Philip Henson, and Service Department Superintendent, Mr. Scott Brock. Ms. Askin stated that she wasn't able to vote at the pre on the previous minutes because she just got back from vacation, but was able to vote on resolutions that she had apparently never seen. Seems like a double standard to me. The municipality of New Lebanon is a managerial-led government. Mr. Nickerson recently stated to that he has instructed the employees of the village that they are not to speak to the press. Mr. Nickerson, you do not have that authority. That is a violation of their civil rights. Have you ever heard of the First Amendment? The freedom of speech. Our employees are entitled to speak whatever they would like, and you do not have any say in what they do. Mr. Rob Anderson. How many employees have you sent home with pay, not including the municipal manager and four department heads? Two. Why? At the direction of special counsel. Oh, really? And so now you all want me to sit up there. We sent home two more employees that are getting paid and they're not working. 
How long have they been off now? Like two weeks. And when are you going to send them back to work? When the special counsel tells them I can. And how do you see that they're a threat to this community and the investigation? That's not for me to decide. Really? Yes. Have you read our charter? Yes. Mr. Nickerson, have you read our charter? I have. Really? By the way, your time is up, but we're allowing you to answer one final or give one final thought, please. Well, um, you're damaging our community and dragging the employees through the mud. Um, and um, so much for transparency. And I believe you should resign. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, question for me. We'll, we'll do a public comment right now. Okay. Uh, Tina Bell, 301 Street. Hi there, everyone. I don't have a whole lot today. Um, the one thing I do want to address is to um, when I come in here for these meetings. Granted, we have a lot more people here. Um, but it would be nice if you had the back lot. Uh, open like a half an hour at least before prior. Um, I got here a quarter after there were people circling the lot in the park. So having that open and lit, lit <coughs> up so they can get back in our park, uh, that would be great. Um, and I just have to address the same thing that some of those are, are saying. Things have been going on for years. We have been watching these videos for 40 years of these meetings. Things have been asked for four years and we have not gotten them. It is astounding that y'all are sitting up here and was thought you've been a little condescending in some of your answers to people. Um, it's astounding that, that y'all are upset now and now what's being spent when for years we have had crappy roads, things are not getting done, uh, answers are not getting met, and, and now you guys want to throw a big scene about everything. Now, I remember the same thing happening when a certain president came in and uh, started taking control of, of, the, of the corruption. If there's corruption, it needs to be seen after. It needs to be taken care of. And if they find out that there isn't any corruption, then those people should have their jobs back. But until then, we are in an interim spot, and it needs to be handled correctly and not questioned every single minute thing that you've never questioned in years. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Greg Roberts, 1080 Saladin. I have a lot more to say, so I'll just make this short. Uh, first of all, most of the stuff that you, Mr. Mayor, said in the letter to St. Oliver, most of that is false. You said in this letter that we're near broke and we're not near broke. We have plenty of money in our funds, in our budgets. Uh, all of you up there have seen, you've seen the reports. You voted on the reports in January, as a matter of fact. So you know what kind of money we have in our funds. There are reasons why some of our funds are negative. Um, the valid reasons why some of our funds are negative. Um, to go off what was just said by another resident, um, you don't have the authority to tell the employees what to do. You didn't have the authority to uh, to suspend anybody in this village. Section 2.18 of our charter says, the council and Lord's committee shall in any manner take part in the discipline of or give orders to any subordinates and employees in, in the administrative service of the municipality. That is a responsibility of management. If you wanted to do that, what you needed to do is hire another interim manager and that person would do that. You didn't have any right to do that. I've spoken to several employees here in the village and they say there's a serious lack of morale within every department and they're complaining of mistrust with the newly elected officials. These next comments are basically for the four people who voted on the resolutions at the last meeting. You need to, you council members and the mayor need to realize that you're the legislative branch of our government. We have a charter along with a manager form of government. 
That person runs the day to day operations in this village, not the council, and it's definitely not you, Mr. Mayor. It's pretty obvious, and was stated in, in a, a couple of articles and uh, news stories that uh, basically, Mr. Mayor, you were fired by the by the manager, and and you and the council members were seeking retaliation. That wasn't brought up in your election, but it needs to be brought up now. You council members and the mayor, you don't represent yourselves. You don't represent the backs, you don't represent the parties, and most of all, you don't represent Shan Venus. You represent all 3,700 residents of New York. And I'll leave you with this. Mayor, you're not from New Lebanon, so you may need to look up this name. Craig Kelly. Thank you. Pete Sexton, 180 Park View Drive. Thank you. Joshua Farley, 13, 136 Brownwood. Thank you. I can't see much. It's got a little complicated in here tonight. I, I have not ever um, seen Danny. Pretty hell that ever confirmed with the dangerous when Ronald Peter was looking into you guys for my alleged ethics violation. You had no problem with that. You didn't see a conflict there, but you do see a conflict with this. Um, as I recall, you're both on record stating that you did not read Pilano's contract in full before you signed it. That's incorrect. That is not it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go back into the record and I'll state that. Also, secondarily, you guys did the discussion of that in executive session. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Which is illegal. You guys cannot have discussions that discuss the actual contract behind closed doors. You have to do that inside. Since you guys all know this stuff, it's a shame that you guys act like you have ethics problems now when you commit ethics violations all the time at free win. Just pay any regard to it when it's your deal. But when you're having somebody that you're friends with look into potentially could have stole money, we don't know, right? Because there's an ongoing investigation, but we don't want to know if money's been stolen. All you care about is if what? We know you are out there, by the way. Shannon Beams, 130 Brown. Okay, I have a long speech prepared with my eyes now to be able to get to. So let me first, the new municipal manager, interim manager, let me introduce you to the first woman, Darla Eds. Her son works in the service department and receives a salary in the fire department. That's your first one. The third woman, Tammy Joy, is married to him. His her daughter, also his daughter, works for the village of New Lebanon, who's on a get leave. Just to kind of like level out the playing fields here. So let's talk about ethics. And I'm gonna say, guess what guys, how long have I been coming here for? Tammy, 2018, I've been the one person standing in this room. None of you, I've never seen any of you, any of you at a meeting, okay? I've been coming, excuse me? Order, order. Okay. order. Coming from the woman whose son receives two salaries. Okay, um, so I have financial reports. I have public, I, I'm sorry, can you pause my time and get control? I'll ask you to leave if you can. Do not have words, please. You were allowed to speak freely without interruption. Allow her to do the same thing. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please. So I've been coming up here. I do public records requests, time cards. I know the ins and outs, Mr. Joy. Um, you have been yourself that I'm pretty knowledgeable about the happenings of the village, correct? Yes. So <clears throat> for Tammy Locke and Gail Joy, to all of a sudden sit here and question something. You have no idea what goes on in this town. Tammy, how much do we pay a month for them to clean the empty courthouse building? How much do you think they would pay somebody? Approximately, yes. High value. Right, because you don't know. So we want to put in an interim law director, right? That's not biased or connected because that falls that any of you guys are a bunch of puppets. Okay, twenty-two hundred dollars a month we spend to clean an empty courthouse that we knew was going to be empty in two thousand nineteen. What are the plans with it? Two thousand twenty-four. What are the plans with it? Nothing. We have no plan. 
We have no plan. We've had a council that sits up here that has never questioned money, has never questioned a resolution, has never questioned a contract, who has voted yes, no, however, unanimously across the board, the good old boy system, right? So now you have the majority of the 11 residents that voted these people in for transparency. So you know what? If you have nothing to hide, what are you afraid of? Why are you questioning so much? Are you, are you afraid of hiding something? Or are you just covering for your friend? I don't know. Because I will tell you right now, hypocrites. You should be ashamed. I want that signatures for you. I was for you. And, and talking about conflict of interest, I think that you, sir, should be removed by your daughter, an employee, is under investigation. That's a conflict of interest. Correct? I have so many notes. I don't even know where to start. Years, for years. I can write a book. I think I'm going to write a book about this place. Talk about this little, little Appalachian mafia that we've got going on in this town. It's pathetic. And I appreciate council for looking into this. And if I'm amending. And if, and if nothing comes out of it, you know what? Ask them all to resign. Then they were wrong. Would you guys be interested in possibly resigning? If, if you find nothing, would you possibly consider resigning? I'll even leave the recall for it. But I guarantee you, with what I know, and I'm not even a special investigator, I guarantee you shit's happening. And I warned you. I told you. This. If everybody feels like we have done wrong for this community and absolutely nothing comes out of this, I will step down. I will. I will. You know what? With what was brought forward and what was said by the attorney, if some people would go and listen to what he brought forth and listen to the meeting. It would be a constitutional violation not to have proceedings go further with what he stated. And that's all I said. If nothing at all comes forward, I will step down. But for people to wait, watch us waste plenty of money, pop holes in this city for as long as I can remember, and I've lived here all my life, and all these people not complain about a darn thing until we get on council and now everybody wants to show up and have something to say. Well, I'm happy you guys showed up. I'm very happy. And I do serve this community. I don't serve any individual. I swore to the Constitution. And I take that very seriously. And just because some people have friends that are being questioned on an investigation that I didn't know anything about until it was put in front of me and had to decide on the best interest of the community, then to be mocked on Facebook about this stuff. Act like adults, you didn't say anything when people brought up things for years. So yes, if nothing comes forth, I will resign. Take that to the bank and cash that, because that's valuable. Yes. Next is uh, administrator staff comments. Here, yeah. Can I request the executive session or an update, please? What is your, uh, what is your update? On the personnel issues. No, uh, there must be a motion to go into an executive session. May I have a motion? Can we ask for a motion, please? For, a motion. for a, uh, an executive session? Yep. Yes. Well, we need to have, we have a vote. Okay. We have a first. Second. 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 Sure. Lock. Yes. Councilmember Perkins. Yes. Councilmember Joy. Yes. Councilmember Sexton. No. Councilmember Back. No. Vice Mayor Atkins. Uh, no. No. Three yes. This is four nines. The motion fails. Okay, next is, is administrative staff comments. Does anyone on council have anything for any of the administrative staff this year? Fire chief, police chief, police chief. I have nothing to Okay. I got one. Go ahead. Please, um, Eric. There's a camera found on uh, Access Road or something like that. You know, think about it. Uh, 
I didn't personally deal with that. Huh? I didn't personally deal with that. This is he didn't personally deal with it. Well, who's dealing with it? So he's supposed to find out who owns it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Lieutenant Workman handled that. Huh? And he returned the camera to whoever owned it. Oh, he returned it? Lieutenant Workman. Yes. Okay. I just want to know what he returned. Anything else, Mr. Perkins? No. Anybody have anything else? For the uh, fire chief or police chief, municipal manager's comments. Uh, any council members have anything for the minister? Can I get a copy of his contact? Too? Yes. Uh, I would like to, uh, once you get a copy of Mr. Joy's request, Ms. Locke's request, and a copy of the contracts, I would like to see that as well, please. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Some of the um, comments that were were made. Um, this is not a buddy system up here. I am none of these people's friends. I'm not your friend. I'm not your friend. I don't hang out with these people. I don't go to their house. I was voted by over 540 people to come up here and do a job, and that's what I'm doing. So for you to group me in. None of these people up here are my friends at all. And I come up here with an open mind and the things that are laid out in front of me is how I vote. And that's how I will continue to do. Mr. Jordan. And I, I do have a few things. Um, at one of the meetings uh, at the very beginning of the year, um, this Carol McMahon um, put in uh, a request to be on several of the boards, um, and and I I I just want to say that you have all. Uh, when you when you categorically just um, rejected her applications, you disrespected not only her but several of the other organizations in this town. Um, she she has shown her commitment to this community. Um, you <clears throat> and through that you disrespected the uh, the. Municipal Library, the Dayton Municipal Library, the New Lebanon Library. Um, she's organized uh, and ran community events. Um, she, you know, is in the Rotary. Um, they they did a lot of uh, things up at up at the park. Um, um, she's in the Chamber of Commerce, and um, and basically you you just uh, basically told everybody in the Chamber of Commerce. And and in the um, in the rotary that you didn't respect her. Um, I, you can say whatever you want about uh, her stance uh, as a council member. That's fine. I don't care. Um, but the fact is that you just you just categorically just voted no um, to for her to be on the, the park board, the tax board, or the personnel board. Um, then you then you turned around um, at at, the, at another meeting and there was there's three open seats uh, on, one on the park board one on the tax board and one on the personnel appeals board. Um, you there was there was two people on the on the park board um, Natasha Farley who basically said that she has lived here for seven years. And she's involved with church. Um, that's all she said. 
Uh, and the second person was Brittany Talley. Um, and, and her comment, her, her application, uh, she stated that she had lived here all her life. She's on the NOYA board. She's an NOYA coach. She started a middle, middle school softball team. She assists with coaching cheer, volunteering with the New Liberty Chamber of Commerce. She helped with fundraisers, events, headed annual cat craft shows that is now called the uh, Christmas in the Village. Uh, she started a Little Miss and Mr. Fundraiser for Dixie Sen Seniors. Um, and, and she did all of these things while she was working at the school and at Farmers Merchants Bank. And uh, basically, you just said that none of that mattered. Um, on, on the tax board, you know, uh, there was uh, uh, the Natasha Farley uh, uh, in an application for that. And, and what did she say that she wanted to do? She said she's lived here and she's involved in church. Um, this is the same person that her spouse wants to abolish the charter that you guys have all uh, gave a note to support. Um, she listed no qualifications. She listed no experience. She listed no education. Um, and you didn't even ask her any of those things. Right? We don't even know if she actually knows how to do taxes. Um, and, then, and then comes the Personnel Appeals Board. Um, there was two people that, uh, that requested to be on that board. One was Natasha Farley and the other was Doug Thompson. Um, and again, there was, there was nothing stated as to why she wanted to be on the on the personnel appeals board, or what experience she had. Um, in, in this, I direct right right to you, Mr. Nickerson, because you even said that you know. I mean, Doug Thompson submitted a three-page resume. He has thirty-four years of experience. He has a master's degree in public administration, and and essentially, you just said. I've never seen him at a meeting, so I, I'm not going to I'm not going to point him. And and what was what was actually funny there is because Mr. Thompson was on the board at the same time that you was on the council at the same time as your wife. So if you had been here, you would have seen him. So uh, that that just strikes me as disrespectful to all three of us. <laughs> all three of those people. And you all said that, that there is no agenda and, and we're seeing the agenda. I mean, this is the agenda. And if, if there is um, impropriety or mismanagement of funds, then yes, we need to know that. But the fact is you could have done this so much easier without dragging the entire community through the mud. <coughs> And I'm going to direct this right to you, Ms. Bemis, because you, you have said many times that you have been coming here for since 2018. Mm -hmm. That means that at least four times you could have been on council and you haven't done it. Right. So my question is, why didn't you? Right. And, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. What? You're right. It, it it doesn't it doesn't matter. But the fact is that you if you knew that there was problems and you knew this how to fix them, all you had to do was get on council and do it. And the fact is that you have said over and over and over again, I got all this evidence. I got all this evidence, but you never gave any of it up. Oh, so because they were trying to lose their talk. <laughs> there's whistleblower laws. So guess what? So anyway, that's what I had to say. We're not Melissa Saxon when she wanted to apply, but no, we got a family member of Lena up here instead of her who comes up here. How does she feel when she asks, Oh, it was my decision for answer? She wants a multi million dollar company on this. I have been coming here for years. I chose not to work with council. 
Um, you know that I'm passionate about this and holding our government accountable. And the thing is that there's so much dysfunction. I'm so sorry to bore you guys up here. Um, there's so much dysfunction. Kara McMahon brought that up. Kara McMahon would sit here and turn her back when people were talking. She would pack her belongings before it was time to go, like pretending like people weren't there. So you know what? No, she probably doesn't have the personality and characteristics for this board. Melissa Saxton applied for council positions, for board positions. You know what they simply said? We just pick. We don't have to. Hired Glenna's appointed a council member, Glenna's cousin, over her who's been coming to every single meeting. That so is you true. know what? So what? Does it does it hurt now? Are you guys blood hurt? Is that what this is? I have not blood hurt. Well, you know what? It seems like it because you know what? This has been going on for years. I told you we've spoken outside, have we not? And what did I tell you? People would get fired. People are being threatened that they're going to be fired. Did I not tell you that? And did you ever did tell, I tell you that? Did, and did, did you I tell me anything that was going on? No, you didn't. So I, I don't know what you're saying. If if you if it's hearsay, what you're saying is hearsay. Okay. As a council member who has a fiduciary responsibility with my tax money, you approve fine. I see your financial reports you get in your council packet. I get them as well. If you're approving that financial report, you're ignorant. You cannot get a good financial grasp of what is going on in the report that you have been receiving. You can't. You have never asked for a contract to be reviewed or you approve it. You have never asked any of these questions. Now, because people are wanting to step up and do the right thing. How do you, know, how do you know that I haven't? It may cost us a little bit of money. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. But you know what? We are wasting hundreds and thousands of dollars. Back to when you, sir, were paying George Marcus two full-time salaries when he was the municipal manager. And oh, I know. You didn't know. That was your answer. I didn't know. Well, I told you, didn't I? Right? I didn't know. There's tons of stuff. I don't say something if I don't know. You should know that by now. I don't have the money, the time, or the resources to sit here and pursue something on my own. I am just so thankful that we have council members out here who actually have the balls, I'm just going to say it that way, because they're getting a lot of heat from this. And they're getting heat from people that are either connected to a family member or a co-worker because there's nothing but nepotism and communism here. Because people don't know. So these people don't want to come up here and say, oh, get more chairs. You know what? You have no idea what's been going on in this village. None. Because if you knew, you would be tucking your tail and being like, oh, shoot, I got to go. That's embarrassing. So there's your answer. Mr. Beck, any comments? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 that'd be it. Mr. Perkins. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mr. Joyce said that I'll also put uh, his first name was Doug, but I can't remember. But he was on the council, and when I was on the council, and we'll go, what you said, but you didn't know him, and that's one of the reasons why he didn't want him on the on the on that board. You didn't know this gentleman until he came into the office, and we'll go, you voted for it. Thank you. Much better comment. I just want to let everybody know, I did not move here to 2019. I do not know any of these guys personally since. Um, the only person that I might have had contact with was Tim Bat because he cut my grass. And I was one that actually let him go from cutting my grass. So if he was my best friend or somebody, I think I would got rid of him for cutting grass. And for two, I've not been in anybody's house and this anybody that lives in this that's in this building, I have not been in anyone's house or over to their house on to the land or no property. The only time I've been outside, I went to a meeting with Melissa and I didn't even go into a whole yard. I stayed in my car the whole time. Saturday. And we went to a meeting for city council in Columbus. That's the first time I've ever been at Melissa's. Shannon, I've never been to her house. I don't know where she lives. Natasha, Josh, never been to their house. Never been inside Tim's house. Never been over at Mr. Perkins, Gail's, Dave, or in, um, Tammy's. So for somebody to say I have an agenda or anything, no, I don't. 
The only thing I have is if there is something going on, then if they got the Ohio Attorney General and the state auditor involved, my thing is that they should be looked at. I'm not going to stop something that is going on that is they'll say that there was an investigation. If they think the investigation needs to be, so be it. If it comes back that there was nothing found, everybody's going to be back at work. And that's what I hope in the long run that comes out, that everybody's clear they can come back to work. But until then, this investigation is going to go on. And I had no say. I did not know what was going on. Did not have a clue. And Miss Dolan Dull Eds, you could sit there and shake your head and act like I did. But I could tell you right now, under oath and on my kids' lives, I had no knowledge that this was going on. So you can act like I did, but I have no knowledge that this was going on when I came here last uh, month. Thank you. Yeah. Real quick, real quick. Who were the two people you fired or you let go? I haven't fired anyone. When you said you let two people go. No, they're on paid leave. Two staff members, two staff members. Maybe two more. What was the reason? It was at the direction of special counsel. Uh -huh. It was at the direction of our special counsel during the investigation. People, yes, I, I think what people were thinking, and I, I know you're frustrated, but it, it means when we've had stuff to vote on, you guys state, oh, I can't vote on it. We need to postpone for the minutes because you just got them that day. Okay, but hold on, just give me one second. I think people are questioning because. We all got that resolution right before the meeting. Didn't even have time to read it. But you guys voted on that. I asked so you that, understand how that looks. But could I address that? On uh, Glenna's contract, I asked if I could see both of them. And I asked to table it. And none of you guys did that. None of you guys would agree to table it. Because okay. And I just wanted time to be able to look at both contracts before I can make a decision. Did you have this? Yes. And was you voted for it, correct? I voted no on that contract at the meeting. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. So I'm hearing the people. I did. I vote no on the contract because of the issue. I, and just, I voted no if I have. Like the minutes, I did not see the minutes. I did not have it, and it's. But when you hear an attorney comes up and say they've seen enough evidence, and you hear that the Ohio State Attorney General is involved and the state audited is involved, I am out. If they're involved, I am not going to stay in anybody's way under an investigation. That is, that's my duty. If they're going to come in, that's I'm going to let them do what they need to do. I'm out of it. I'm not going to be involved in it. And that's why I voted the way I voted. Is that it? All right. I don't have any more comments as the mayor. I have a motion to adjourn for this evening. So moved. Second. Councilmember Sexton? Yes. Vice Mayor Atkins? Yes. Councilmember Perkins? Yes. Councilmember Back? Yes. Councilmember Joy? Yes. Councilmember Rock? Yes. Mayor? Yes. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.